In 2019, Nuclear Information Service released the Trouble Ahead report, looking at the risks and rising costs in the UK's nuclear weapon upgrades. This video revisits the topic in late 2022 to look at what has changed in the time since it was released. A major finding of the report was that delays in the upgrade programmes could make the government's policy of keeping a nuclear armed submarine permanently at sea unsustainable. Since then, there have been further delays for the Dreadnought programme, which is building submarines to replace the current fleet. The third delivery phase of the Dreadnought programme had to be delayed for a year until 2022. The government said this was due to the effects of the coronavirus pandemic and claims the programme is on track, but the refusal to give a specific in-service date for HMS Dreadnought beyond the early 2030s render this assurance meaningless. Delays to the astute submarine programme, which is building nuclear-powered but conventionally armed submarines at Barrow in Furness, are likely to have had an effect on the Dreadmore programme. HMS Audacious, the fourth astute submarine, remained at Barrow for a full three years after its official launch date. It has now been launched and is in active service. The fifth astute submarine, HMS Anson, has also now been launched and was commissioned in August 2022. This is likely to mean that the hull sections for HMS Dreadnought can now be assembled in the massive Devonshire Dock Hall at Barrow. These have been built and fitted out at Barrow over several years, but they could not be assembled while there were still three astute submarines being built in the hall. This process may have already begun. In the latest data release about the government's major projects, the start date, end date, overall and annual costs of the Dreadnought programme are redacted, citing national security. The end date of the astute programme is also redacted, but the programme is expected to cost nearly £900 million more than when our report was released in 2019. Both programmes are rated AMBER by the Government's Infrastructure and Projects Authority, meaning that although the programmes appear feasible, there are significant issues that require management attention. The Government's official cost estimate for the Dreadnought programme is £31 billion plus a £10 billion contingency fund. This contingency does not exist as a separate budget anywhere, so it is more accurate to regard it as the margin of overspend that the government is prepared to countenance for the programme. Officially, £865 million of this contingency had already been spent up to March 2021, but this does not accurately reflect the level of overspend on the project, which was actually £1.5 billion. At the time this video was produced, the level of contingency spending for the financial year ending in March 2022 had yet to be agreed. But MOD spending plans expect to overspend on Dreadnought and a related programme by another £1.3 billion by March 2025. The core production capability project at Royals Royce Rainsway in Derby is building facilities for the manufacture of reactor cores and fuel for the Dreadnought class of submarines. The core manufacturing facility appears to now be complete, but the fuel facility wasn't expected to be ready before 2026. The official government line is that the core production project which included production of the core and fuel for HMS Dreadnought, is scheduled to complete in April 2028. But the programme is currently rated red, meaning that successful delivery of the project appears to be unachievable. This means there is a serious risk of delays at Rainsway affecting the in-service date for the first Dreadnought submarine. All financial information about the programme is currently redacted. HMS Vanguard, the oldest of the current nuclear-armed submarine fleet, entered Devonport in December 2015 for deep maintenance and refuelling, which was expected to take four years. The submarine remained in dry dock until September 2022, nearly three years longer than planned, and it is not expected to return to service until 2023. Part of the delay is due to the decision to refuel Vanguard, following the discovery of a problem in an onshore test reactor. It was decided not to refuel HMS Victorious, the second oldest submarine. Due to the delays, it seems that neither of the other two submarines will be refuelled during their deep maintenance periods. This delay has meant that Victorious has not been able to begin its scheduled maintenance in Devonport. In 2020, it was revealed that one of the three submarines that were supposed to be available for patrol had spent more than a year out of the water at Fast Lane. In autumn 2022, a fire broke out on Victorious during a trip to the United States, and the submarine was forced to surface and return to Fast Lane for repairs. Problems such as this are likely to occur with more frequency as the Vanguard fleet ages. Reports in late 2022 that the Vanguard submarines were being sent out for unprecedented five-month patrols point towards serious issues with submarine reliability in the fleet. In March 2020, Devonport requested a scoping planning option on converting Tendok for submarine maintenance. This will address some of the capacity issues at the site, but not completely. 
the MOD has approved £448 million for the assessment phase of a new infrastructure project at Devonport called the Submarine Waterfront Infrastructure Future. Demolition work around TENDOT began in May 2022, with the full cost of rebuilding work at the site being estimated at £2 billion. This is double the £1 billion estimate at the time of the Trouble Ahead report. There are now 22 out-of-service nuclear submarines waiting to be dismantled, 7 in Rosyth and 15 in Devonport. 11 of the submarines in Devonport still have nuclear fuel on board. The only progress made so far on submarine dismantling has been the removal of low-level nuclear waste from two of the submarines in Rosyth and work beginning on a third. Removal of intermediate-level waste, including the reactor pressure vessels, has not begun on any of the submarines, and fuel cannot be removed from the 11 submarines carrying it until the facility for defuelling at Devonport is ready. Since Trouble Ahead was released, the Clyde Infrastructure Programme at Fastlane and Coolport has become a major project in its own right. It is forecast to cost nearly £1.6 billion and last until 2032. As recently as 2016, ahead of the vote to build the dreadnought submarines, the government was saying that no new infrastructure would be required at Fastlane. The programme was originally intended to be even more extensive than it currently is, covering facilities for docking, waste management, weapons processing, security, training and accommodation. However, Due to concerns about how quickly the programme could be delivered, it has had to be scaled back and the forecast cost of the programme has been reduced by nearly £200 million since September 2019. It is currently rated red due to staffing and supply chain issues and interdependencies with other programmes, so further changes to its scope seem inevitable. In September 2020, the government announced their intention to build a new nuclear warhead and the following year the Integrated Review announced an increase to the UK's warhead stockpile limit. The NIST report, Extreme Circumstances, released in August 2022, discusses these developments in detail, including the likelihood that the new warhead will have a higher destructive power than the current one. The £20 billion Nuclear Warhead Capability Sustainment Programme, which encompassed the operating budget and infrastructure projects at the Atomic Weapons Establishment and was due to run until 2025, is no longer included in the MOD's major projects portfolio. Instead, the remaining infrastructure work has been spun off into separate projects within the portfolio, the Pegasus Enriched Uranium Facility, the Anglo-French Tutatis Hydrodynamics Facility being built in Valduc, France, and the Mensa Warhead Assembly Disassembly Facility. All the data on these projects is redacted citing national security, but in February 2022 the government announced that Mensa, the most expensive and problematic of these projects, was going to be delayed a further year until 2024. It may be another two years after that until the facility is fully operational. In November 2020, the government made a surprise announcement that AWE was to be brought back into public ownership. NIS understands that this decision was in part due to the poor regulatory and programme delivery performance of the private consortium that previously ran the sites, but a major factor was also a desire for direct government control of AWE as work commences on the new warhead. The change came into effect in July 2021. As well as renationalising AWE, the MOD have bought the small manufacturer Sheffield Forge Masters into public ownership. The company, which produces specialist steel to make submarine reactor pressure vessels, had already received financial support from BAE Systems and Rolls-Royce. The government has also provided initial funding for a consortium trying to develop small modular reactors, which includes Rolls-Royce. As discussed in Trouble Ahead, this reactor type would help fund Rolls-Royce's submarine reactor business and would benefit much of the submarine reactor supply chain, including Sheffield Forge Masters. However, at present, government funding is far below what would be needed to bring the reactors to a stage of development where they could be built. Since Trouble Ahead was released, Babcock has continued to attract negative headlines in the financial press. They announced a £1.6 billion loss in June 2021 and were obliged to sell profitable parts of their business to reassure investors. In early 2022, the Financial Reporting Council began an investigation into PricewaterhouseCoopers work auditing Babcock's accounts between 2017 and 2020. Subsequent financial disclosures have been more positive for Babcock, but with share prices having fallen by more than half since the end of 2019, and ongoing problems at Devonport, which remains under enhanced regulatory attention, questions remain over the long-term future of its work there. The problems in the Vanguard fleet, wider delays in the programme, and the increasing secrecy around the upgrade projects all point to the government facing mounting challenges keeping a nuclear-armed submarine continually deployed at sea, as predicted in the Trouble Ahead report. The other main finding was that the government faced a trilemma with regard to funding its nuclear weapons programme. A choice between increasing funding to the MOD, moving funding to the nuclear weapons programme from conventional military spending, or reducing costs in the nuclear programme. 
Under the Johnson and Trust governments, a clear decision was taken to substantially increase the MOD budget in general, and nuclear spending in particular. The integrated review was an attempt to resolve the tension between MOD ambitions and the available budget. However, despite a £48 billion spending increase in the equipment plan that followed the review, the National Audit Office continued to warn about repeating the mistakes of the past and to highlight the risk of cost overruns on nuclear projects. Since the collapse of the Trust government, the prospect for even greater increases in funding to the MOD appears to have evaporated. While the Sunak government has pledged yet another review, it seems clear that the trilemma has resurfaced and is no closer to having been resolved. In fact, after several years of planning for repeated budget increases, it may be more acute than ever.